NASA has been directed by the White House to establish standard time for the moon to be called coordinated lunar time. Joining us live with more from the CSIRO Space and Astronomy Centre is Glenn Nagel. Glenn, good to see you as always. Thanks so much for your time. Why do we need moon time? What's behind the move? Well, as I say in the business, timing is everything. Here on Earth, we rely on our clocks for everything from our GPS systems to navigate us here on our planet to our banking and computer systems. Uh, lots of different countries, if we were all running our own times, it'd be a bit of a mess on this planet. So when we're going to the moon, so many countries working together independently right now, they're using their own time coordinates. If we're going to all work together, then we need that lunar time coordinate system. It's used by satellites and, and spacecraft, so everyone's on the same page, essentially. Yeah, if we want to go anywhere on the surface of the moon, we need to be able to get from point A to point B. That's going to rely on a lunar global positioning system. And right at the moment, like here on Earth, we have our sort of the, the timeline between sort of eastern and western hemispheres. We know if we cross that, then we're at a different time. We don't have those sorts of lines, those sorts of coordinates on the moon as yet. So it's really important as all these missions are heading off to the lunar south pole, we've got lots of astronauts there, we're sending cargo vehicles, we're sending humans down on the lunar surface and in orbit around the moon, we need that timing system to make sure that we're all getting to exactly where we want to be. Okay, well, speaking of timelines, and I like how you threw that in there too, Glenn, uh, what is the latest on the Artemis moon missions? The project, as we know, has been dogged by a few delays. Are things getting back on track? So, yes, Artemis 2, which will carry four astronauts to the moon next year, the orbital mission this time, just a final test of the capsule. That's slated to now to launch in mid next year. That's all looking very, very good now. They've sorted out a lot of the issues that they thought they had with the spacecraft and its heat shield and its actual life support system. So that's looking great. And, of course, now we're getting ready to do even more at the moon, a lot more commercial missions are going to be operating at the moon. We've got at least another four missions heading there before the end of the year. We were just showing our viewers then some, some pictures of, of what looked like moon vehicles. I see NASA's selected a few companies to actually work uh, with them to develop these sort of lunar rovers. What are they? Essentially cars on the moon to help those astronauts with their missions? Yeah, if we're going to get anywhere, we're going to use that GPS system. We're going to have vehicles that will use that. So today, NASA announced three companies, Intuitive Machines, which earlier this year landed the first commercial mission on the surface of the Moon, Lunar Outpost. It's actually going to also be working with the Australian Space Agency on the Lunar Trailblazer effort, and then Venturi Astrolab. So all of them are designing these Mars rovers under a sort of $4.6 billion US project to develop a whole range of rovers, not only to build them, but to test them and send them to the moon. They actually have to land them there as well as commercial operators. So really building up this amazing lunar economy now with lots of things happening between the Earth and the moon, a lot more commercial operations, and a chance for people like you and me to actually get more and more involved. I'd love to see you reporting from a lunar buggy on the lunar surface one day. Oh, Glenn, don't give me ideas. Goodness, um, you're just talking to one of my, my lifelong dreams there. You never know. Let's not write that one off. Um, I was going to say those those images of the cars, they look pretty futuristic. They look pretty cool, actually. I can only imagine the, the sort of technology that would need to go into developing a vehicle that can work on the moon. Yeah, unlike during the Apollo days where we sent a couple of lunar rovers and they were just to drive around taking the astronauts from one location to the next, this time we want to have vehicles that will actually be sort of like a, a home for the astronauts. So they go off on these long drives, actually stay in the vehicle, sort of like taking your own camper van to the moon to be able to do science and experiments. But also the vehicles need to be designed to operate independently. And for a couple of reasons, we can send those machines out to do exploration for us without risk to astronauts. Or if an astronaut was out driving one day and they were disabled for some reason, then the rover could actually bring them back home to safety. Fascinating stuff. Glenn Nagel, always appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks very much, Ash.